Today we are going to watch a video of Notable Women of Lorraine. Video spotlights 22 women, and although there are many more than that, these are the ones we have chosen. Mrs. Carey Christina Moore was the wife of Leonard M. Moore, who served as mayor of Lorraine from 1915 to 1916. She was born in Lorraine, Ohio on May the 16th, 1876. They had three daughters, Ruth, Eleanor, and Helen. Eleanor Amanda Moore was born in 1903 and married James Edward Lyons in the home that is now the Moore House Museum at 309 Fifth Street on October 6, 1926. They both attended Lorraine High School. She majored in Latin at Oberlin College and after graduation returned to Lorraine to teach. She and her husband later moved to Santa Ana, California. Helen was born on April the 10th, 1899 and never married. She graduated from Smith College. She was a registrar for the DAR for many years. She died at the age of 81 in 1980. Ruth never married and died in 1964. Elizabeth N. McConnell was the principal of Lorraine High School from 1887 to 1899. She was honored by all for her work by those identified with development of the public school system. The superintendent of schools at that time was quoted as saying, the energy and skill of Ms. McConnell and above all her utter forgetfulness of self where the interest of her pupils were concerned will always be held in affection and grateful remembrance. A plaque was presented to the school on January 29, 1932. It said, her intimate association with Lorraine High School for a period of 45 years, her presence at every closing hour, her loyalty and devotion to our aims and ideals have prompted the hanging of this tablet by the pupils of Lorraine High School. At the de dedication of the new Lorraine High School on May 12, 1916, Mrs. McConnell was quoted, may the spirit of loyalty and cooperation that filled the old Lorraine High School live forever. Jane Lindsay taught school for nine years and was the principal of Fairholme School in Lorraine for 42 years. She graduated from Lorraine High School in 1888. She retired in 1939 and died in 1947. In February of 1957, the Lorraine Board of Education approved the building of an elementary school to be built on Day Drive. It was to be named for Jane Lindsay because she was well loved by everyone on the east side of Lorraine for her many years of devoted service to the children. Her sister, Helen Lindsay, laid the first brick at the groundbreaking of the school on June 26, 1957, with a trowel especially engraved for the occasion. The school is now a senior center. Jane Lindsay was a small school with the classes having only about 18 children in each grade. Jane Lindsay would have been proud of the school and its staff. Wilhelmina Minnie Copenhafer was born in 1882. She was married to George Copenhafer, a carpenter. They had two children, Ira, who was born in 1907 and died in 1988, and Marion, who was born in 1910. Minnie joined the police force in 1920 as one of the first women in police work. She resigned in 1923. She had minimal police training, including handling a pistol. She did walk a beat sometimes, but mostly was used for crowd control at dance halls and skating rinks. The men in the police force did not cooperate in training her for anything more. She also worked at a detention center, which was an old firehouse around 14th Street. Minnie died in 1937. Emma C. Finley had a teaching career of 43 years, 36 of which were spent in Lorraine schools. She taught at Lorraine High School for the last 30 years of her life. She was loved and respected by pupils and teachers alike. Not only was she an excellent teacher, but also a companion and friend interested in their progress and success. The class of 1941A presented a plaque to Lorraine High School inscribed as follows. In memory of Emma C. Finley, 
a teacher in Lorraine High School for 29 years, wise in counsel, loyal in friendship, devoted in service, strong in character. She died on November 14, 1940. Mr. P.C. Bunn, then the superintendent of schools, said in his tribute to Ms. Finley, aside from all that she did, it was because of what she was that we admired, honored, and loved her. Harriet Root was a descendant of one of Lorraine's pioneer families. She came with her family from Sheffield, England, and founded Sheffield Village near the French Creek Road area in Lorraine County. In 1850, they moved into a house at 3530 East Erie Avenue in Lorraine, which they built. The house is still standing and is owned and occupied by Ben and Jane Norton. In 1907, she started a sewing class in South Lorraine for 100 girls. In 1931, she was named Lorraine's best citizen. The Quota Club of Lorraine named her Woman of Service in 1967. In 1924, she was appointed to the National Disaster Staff of the Red Cross because of the part she played in the rehabilitation of Lorraine following the tornado. She headed the Lilac Committee and was instrumental in the original Rose Garden at Lakeview Park. She was 89 years old when she died. Vietta Lindsley, though not born in Lorraine, did come here in 1924 to teach fourth to sixth grades at Garfield School. She taught numerous children whose parents had just arrived from European countries while at Garfield School, where she taught for 15 years. For 13 years, she taught sixth grade at Fairholme School, where she was the assistant to the principal. She was also very active in the YWCA of Lorraine. Miss Lindsley served Lorraine schools beyond the call of duty by sharing with students her good mind and also her tender heart. She retired in 1961 while principal at Fairholme School to end a 43-year career in education. She continued church and organization work and also voluntary teaching. In 1964, she was accorded the public recognition that is deserved but all too rarely given to those who quietly devote their lives to the service of others. She was chosen as Lorraine's Woman of Service. She received her bachelor's degree from Ohio University and a master's degree from the University of Connecticut. Sybil Adams was a piano teacher who taught from her home on West 9th Street in Lorraine for over 50 years. Miss Adams' father specifically built this home for her and her mother to give lessons. The first floor of the home was one big open living room area with an upright piano and a grand piano. The students were taught on the upright and at the end of each year, a recital was held in the living room. Everyone remembers her famous fudge, which she served immediately after recitals. At the time of her death at 97, she left no family members. Her students remember her with great affection. She not only taught music notes, but character. In the 1930s, she and her brother Eugene organized the Lorraine Symphony Orchestra and the Junior Symphony. The message in her story is that each of us has an opportunity in our own place and profession to make a difference for others. We can teach by example, we can get involved in positive ways in the lives we touch, and we can live forever in the memories and in the qualities we foster in others. Ms. Adams graduated from Lorraine High School and earned a degree in music from Oberlin College of Music in 1920. Ms. Catherine Gregg taught science at Hawthorne Junior High School during the 1940s. She graduated from Lorraine High School, Oberlin College, and received her master's degree from Western Reserve University in Cleveland. She was prominent in music circles in Lorraine. She was appointed assistant program director in the Red Cross Volunteer Service to the Armed Forces. She also was a member of the Lorraine chapter of the Association of American University Women. In 1958, she wrote a book entitled Comparative Social Assimilation, a study of Lorraine's life, which analyzes 37 ethnic groups in Lorraine. She is a descendant of John S. Reed and Ralph Lyons, names associated with Lorraine's earliest days. 
She became a professor of psychology at State Teachers College in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Some people are born leaders, and one of them was Thelma Pearl Trotter. She and her husband operated Trotter's Office Supply at 4th Street and Broadway in Lorraine from 1956 to 1965. She cared a great deal about the Lorraine Community Hospital Auxiliary and was very active in it. In 1980, she was named one of YWCA's Women of Achievement. She was described by many as a doer and a leader. She was Deputy Grand Matron of Queen City Chapter Order of Eastern Star. She was also active with the Lorraine Business and Professional Women's Club, the Lorraine County Cancer Society, and she was on the Charter Committee for the Lorraine YWCA, as well as a charter member of the El Trusa Club. In 1965, she was made the Managing Director of the Firelands Retirement Center. She is credited with having paved the way for many of today's growing number of business women. Helen Steiner Rice was born in Lorraine on May 19, 1900. She is often referred to as the poet laureate of inspirational verse. When her father died in 1918, she became the family breadwinner. While working at the Lorraine Electric Light and Power Company, she was energetic and enterprising and proved that her insights in marketing were sound and became the company's advertising manager. She married Franklin Rice in January 1929. In 1931, she began working for the Gibson Art Company in Cincinnati, Ohio, and never returned to Lorraine to live. She became a widow at the age of 32. She took over as the greeting card editor in the mid-30s and held that position for more than 40 years. At the time of her mother's death in the mid-40s, she penned a condolence verse entitled, When I Must Leave You, that has become a popular sympathy card. Helen died in 1981. Pauline Crooks Van Dusen developed a second career as a storyteller after retiring as a teacher with the Lorraine Schools, where she had a 32-year teaching career. She was named Educator of the Year by the Lorraine JCs in 1974. She was a charter member of the Black River Historical Society in Lorraine and past president of Lorraine Women's Club. As a storyteller, she had a regular gig telling stories to children at the Lorraine Public Library. She took her talents to WEOL, an Illyria radio station, to reach even more youngsters. She was known as the Story Lady. She died at the age of 96 on April 8, 2007. Beth Stacker was born in Fairbault, Minnesota on March 15, 1908. She married C. Paul Stocker in 1930 and moved to Lorraine in 1935. In 1928, she earned a Bachelor of Science degree from Ohio University, where she majored in biology. In 1979, she established the Stocker Foundation, which under her capable leadership grew into a mature grant-making organization, giving an annual distribution of more than $2.5 million primarily to Lorraine County. Over the years, she was recognized for her volunteerism and leadership. Beth was a humble person who enjoyed simple pleasures. She thought of herself as a regular person who did what she could to help others, and help others she did. In 2003, she was presented with an honorary degree, Doctorate of Humane Letters for Exemplary Devotion to Ohio University, and compassionate commitment to education and philanthropy. Alice Weston was a broadcasting pioneer in Lorraine and Cleveland. She died on January 9, 2007, at the age of 95. She was remembered as a kind person, a thorough professional, and tireless booster for Lorraine. Although she was born and raised in Holland, Michigan, Alice considered Lorraine her hometown for most of her life. Her programs on WUAB Channel 43 were entitled The Lorraine News and Lorraine Conversation. She is known for helping to get the current Lorraine City Hall built and for helping to save Lorraine's historic Palace Theater from demolition. She received her master's degree in communications from Kent State University. Paul Kiska said, 
He got his first break from Alice. He called her one of the most genuine people he's ever known. He is quoted as saying, she taught me to show respect for the people you're interviewing. She said to look them in the eye when you're interviewing and not to work from notes. It was said that no matter who she touched in her life, she made them feel like they were important. It could be a janitor or a security guard, but if Alice touched them, they felt like the most important person in the world. Alice Weston was one of a kind. She contributed much to this community, personally and professionally, for which we can all be grateful. Lori, Mrs. George Hoke, is identified with community and civic projects in Lorraine. She was the first president of Lorraine Community Hospital Auxiliary. She was one of the Lakeland Women's Club members who worked to establish Lorraine Community Hospital. She served on the hospital's board of trustees and she was behind the movement to establish the Lorraine YWCA. She served as its president in 1964. She served on the United Appeal Board and was identified with the Colony Club, Lorraine Women's Club, and the AAUW, where she served as a past president. Lori helped with the three and a half million bond issue across that made Lorraine Community Hospital possible. She was one of the workers in the Follies that raised the money to finance the bond issue and one to conduct a survey to see whether or not the community needed and wanted a hospital so she had concrete evidence to present to the city fathers. Ruth Calta was born on May 12, 1922 in Lorraine and was a lifelong resident. She was a graduate of Kent State University. She taught for three years in the Lorraine school system. She was one of 40 founding members of Lorraine Community Hospital. She was very well known for her 40 years of volunteer service to the hospital and her daily presence in the treasure chest. She was a founding member of the Lorraine Community Hospital Auxiliary and served several terms as its president. She was a member of the Board of Directors for Lorraine Community Hospital, as well as its Home Health Care Professional Advisory Board. Ruth also served as a member of the Board of Trustees of Lorraine Palace Civic Center. Ruth often said she couldn't imagine people who say they have nothing to do when there's so much volunteer work that needs to be done. She was once described as active, energetic, and enthusiastic, but never passive. Ella Wolford is the mother of Toni Morrison. Her husband worked at the shipyards while she stayed home and reared their two sons and two daughters. She filled them with stories about her childhood in Greenville, Alabama. When she wasn't reading stories to them, she would recite poetry. It was extremely difficult for the Woofers to afford to send Chloe to college, but George worked two and three jobs to send her. Ella died in February of 1994. Her sons both died, one in 1992 and one in 1993. Her other daughter is Lois Brooks, who still lives in Lorraine. Toni Morrison, the first black woman to receive the Nobel Prize in Literature and also the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, was born Chloe Wolford on February 18, 1931, in Lorraine. She graduated with honors from Lorraine High School in 1949. While in college, many people couldn't pronounce her first name correctly, so she changed it to Tony, a shortened version of her middle name. She worked at Random House for almost 20 years and left that position in 1983. In 1987, she was named the Robert F. Goheen Professor in the Council of Humanities at Princeton University, where she taught creative writing. In 1993, Toni Morrison received the Nobel Prize in Literature. She was the eighth woman and the first black woman to do so. As a child at the home of her parents, George and Rama Willis Wolford, Chloe heard many tales of Southern and black folklore. The Woofords were proud of their heritage. Chloe attended an integrated school in Lorraine. She was friends with many of her white childhood friends and did not encounter discrimination until she started dating. From her father, Chloe gained a Marcus Garvey-like perspective on whites, one that left her with a distrust of them. Paula Scrivana was born in Lorraine and graduated from Lorraine High School in 1968. 
Paula, along with her husband, has been performing on stage in Chicago since 1985. In 1987, she was among 11 honored by Chicago Tribune in its third annual group of Chicagoans who made their mark in the arts in 1987. Among her roles have been Eva Perone in Evita, for which she got rave reviews. One review of her performance as Eva said, it is comparable to watching a shooting star hurling hellbent across the sky. She has performed in productions of Hello, Dolly! and Gypsy. In 2005, she played Mrs. Potts in Beauty and the Beast at the Carousel Dinner Theater. She attended St. Anthony's School. After graduating from Lorraine High School, she attended Northwestern University and is now a professional based in Chicago. Paula is grateful to her Lorraine High School drama teacher, Howard Hansen, who gave her a recommendation to Northwestern. To quote Paula, I don't know that I'd be doing this today if it wasn't for Howard Hansen. The list of major productions she has performed in is endless. According to Paula, she never had any particular drive to make it big in show business when she was a child growing up in Lorraine, the daughter of a steelworker father and a determined mother. Actually, the only reason I am where I am is that my mother pushed me, said Paula. Jean Kepke Wilms graduated from Lorraine High School in 1933. In 1934, she was chosen to be the queen for the Lorraine Centennial Celebration. Prior to that, she was chosen to be the first lilac queen for Lorraine. Jean believes that in order to be real, you must remain true to yourself and to the truth. She believes in fairness, balance, harmony, and peace. Material things have never mattered to her as much as love for people. She is an avid reader of classic novels. Jean also reigned as queen at Lorraine's sesquicentennial in 1984, 50 years after she reigned as the centennial queen. She has served as program chairman for the Lorraine chapter of the American Association of Retired Persons and as a member of the Lorraine Historical Society. Maureen Decker Kepke was a soprano well known in this area as a voice teacher. She died at the age of 94 in March 2007. Although she was born in Illyria, she lived most of her life in Lorraine and Amherst. Mrs. Kepke was the winner of the 1996 Woman of Achievement Award in Lorraine County for her long history of civic contribution and community service. She was a member of the Ohio State Quota Club International and the Cirrhosis Club. She directed the choirs of Emanuel United Methodist Church of Lorraine and at the First United Methodist Church of Lorraine in Illyria. She truly believed it was her calling to use her gifts in God's service, and she did.